Hi, my name is Erin, and today we are going to learn how to fill out the phase two and three reports through the online reporting portal. So to get started, you will need to go to our website at upperbigblue.org, and then along the top bar under programs, you'll click on online reporting. And then once you get to this page, you'll scroll down and click the access the reporting portal button. Okay, so this will open up a second window um, and it will look like this. If you have logged in before, either with the phase two, three report or your water use report, you will use that same login info. If you don't remember your password, you'll click on the don't remember password button. If you have never done this online before and would like to contact our office and we can get an account set up for you. So we will go ahead and get logged in. And then once we get logged in, you'll have basically your home page. So you have your to-do list, the submitted list, and the approved list. So anything under your to-do list are items that you need to complete. So here we can see we still have some water use things to do, but if you scroll down, phase two and three fields. So before we get started, if you click on the summary tab over on the left-hand side, and then click on nitrogen chart, this will be your UNL total nitrogen needed charts, all the tables that you need. So, you know, figuring out how much N is needed as well as your soil analysis. We do mail these charts out every year with your packet. So you might have a hard copy on hand, but these are located here in case if you have misplaced them. So we'll go back to task. And we'll go ahead and get started. So we will click on one of our fields. And so when you click on it, it will pop up info in the middle and right hand side of your screen. So we'll go ahead and get started. So legal description will be listed here. If you have a farm name, it will be listed here. Total acres, and these are the total acres listed within the tract. It doesn't necessarily mean total irrigated or total dryland acres, just total acres within the boundary of the tract. And then we have primary operator and the landowner, and then the date that the event was created. And then we do have an aerial image of your field. You can zoom in and out. It's just to give you basically a bird's eye view of where your field is located. So to get started down here in the bottom right hand corner of the image will be add new practice. So we'll click on that. And one of the things that we have changed about this event is that we now have required fields. So was crop irrigated, crop grown prior year, and then crop planned for current growing season. These three fields do need to be filled out before you can save the event. So for this example, was crop irrigated, we'll say yes. Crop grown prior year, and this will be a drop-down list um, with pre-saved items. If there is something on this list that, or if you have something that's not on the list, give our office a call and we can get the item, item added to the list. So for this example, crop grown prior year, we will say soybeans. Actual yield, we will say was 80. Under the yield unit, we do have options. So bushels, pounds, or tons. So for this example, we are gonna use bushels. Acres in the practice. We will say 100 and then it asks you for your pre-plant and post-plant nitrogen that was applied. So for this example, we'll just say zero for both. And then if you use an inhibitor, you can either check the box to say yes, or you can leave a blank for no. So crop plant for current growing season, we will say is corn. Expected yield, we'll say 250. The yield unit, again, same items, we'll say bushels. Soil sample depth, we do have some pre-saved numbers in here. Again, so for this example, we will say zero because if you're going from beans to corn, it's not a requirement for soil sampling. And then organic matter from your soil test. If there's no test, the default number that we use is 2%. If you do have a soil test, it will be listed on there 
So since we don't have one, we are gonna say it was two. Now, the next field that you'll need to enter in is your UNL total and needed. And this is from a chart. One thing that we have included with the online reporting now is that there are formulas listed on this side of the screen. So if you hit save, it will go ahead and pre-populate what the actual total and needed from the chart is. You can go ahead and still figure it out from the chart, but this is a little shortcut that you can use as well. So then the next two columns are asking for a shallow and deep sample from your lab analysis. And this is if you did take one. Since we didn't take a soil sample, we are gonna just do the defaults. So the average soil nitrate, the default that we say here is three. And then residual soil nitrate, that's taking your average soil nitrate and multiplying that by eight. So this will be 24. Nitrate from previous crop. Again, this is a chart under the summary tab over on the left hand side of your screen. Since we did soybeans, that's gonna be 45. And then if you have nitrate from other sources, for this example, we'll say no. And then what you could do then is calculate out what your UNL recommend nitrate rate is, or you can go ahead and hit save and it will do the calculation for you. We are trying to make this process easier for you. So we did include these formulas. If you still wanna calculate it out on your own, you can, it's just your own preference. So once we have the practice done, you'll click on the X in the upper right-hand corner and you will see that under the event, you'll have a practice. So let's go ahead and do another one. So we'll click add new practice. Was crop irrigated? For this, we'll say no. Crop grown prior year, we will say corn. The actual yield, we'll say it was 180. We'll do bushels. For this one, we'll say it was only for 20 acres. Some numbers for your pre and post plant application. We'll say then inhibitor was used. Crop planned for current growing season. We will say we're doing corn again. Expected yield, we'll say 200. Soil sample depth, since we are doing corn on corn, it is a requirement to do soil sampling. So for this one, we will say we did 24 inches. And then we will find the organic matter off the soil test. So for this example, we'll say it was 2.7%. So again, you can go ahead and hit save here and the application will calculate it out for you or you can use the charts to figure it out on your own. So we'll hit save. And so here it's saying that we're gonna start out at 199.4 pounds per acre. So since we do have a soil sample, you will need to fill in the shallow and deep sample nitrate amounts. These two fields right here do not take decimal points. You can only enter in whole numbers, whereas the average soil nitrate field does allow four decimal points. So if your sample came back at say 2.5 parts per million. You can either round that up to three or you can go ahead and figure out the average on your own and then bypass these two and just put your answer in under the average soil nitrate. So we will go ahead and just calculate out with the application. So for sh shallow sample, we will say that we had 13 parts per million. And then for the deep, we will say that we had four. And then again, if you hit save, it will go ahead and calculate out your average soil nitrate. So then for the next step, we're gonna calculate out the residual soil nitrate. And as I said before, this is taking your average and multiplying it by eight. So you're gonna have 56.48 as your residual soil nitrate. Nitrate from previous crops, since we did corn, that's going to be zero. Nitrate from other sources, we're going to say is zero. We will hit save again, and then it will do the calculations for you. So the final answer is 142.92 pounds per acre. So we'll go ahead and hit close, and as you can see here, we now have two practices. 
One of the things about the online portal is that you can add as many practices as you want. So you might have, so if you look at the aerial here, you can see that this area might be farmed one way, this might be farmed another way, but then you also might have dryland corners. So you can add as many practices as you want per field. There is no limit. Since we had a soil analysis on the last practice that we entered, you will need to attach the lab report. So if you click on add attachment, then you can navigate through your computer and attach it to the field. And you can also do the same with the irrigation scheduling report as well. So once you are done, you can go ahead and hit submit on that. And then you'll see that it moved this field from your to-do list to your submitted list. And then on our end, we will get the notification that you have submitted a field, and then we will go through and either approve or deny it. If we do approve your field, it will move from the submitted list to the approved list. If there was something wrong with how you entered in one of the practices, we will move it back to your to-do list and we will notify you of that change. So we'll do another one as an example. So we'll do our grow north. So again, your legal description, the farm name, acres, operator, and landowner. Now let's say that we wanna change the farm name. So in the entry comment, you could type a note that says field name should be Grow West. And then you'll hit save. And it'll show you that the entry comment stays there. So then when you submit it, we will get that entry comment and we'll know to change the field name. So as you can see here, I did do a few practice events already, showing the different dates, but we will go ahead and do a new practice. So was crop irrigated, we will say yes. Crop grown the prior year, we will say corn. Actual yield will say 250. That's bushels, acres and practice. Again, it's just how many acres you did for that practice. We'll say 100 for this example. Uh, Pre-plant, we'll say 50. Post-plant, 100. We'll leave inhibitor blank because we didn't use one. Crop plant for current growing season, we will say soybeans. Now, since we're doing beans, we stop here. We don't need to fill out anything else. So you'll hit save. But you will notice that over on the right-hand side, the total and needed from chart, that will go ahead and fill in. Just, you can go ahead and leave that. We will clean it up on our end. You don't need to worry about cleaning that up. So hit the X, attach any soil sample analyses or the irrigation scheduling report here. And once you're done, you will hit submit. So that is pretty much how you fill out the phase two through report online. If you do have any questions, please give our office a call and we will be more than happy to help you out with the form. Thank you and have a good day.